Coming up on this week's episode, football travels to the big city of Fayetteville, men's soccer competes for the Conference USA regular season championship, and women's basketball opens its season. This is Capital City Sports. <laughs> Welcome into this week's episode of Capital City Sports. I'm Emily McDonald. The football team looked to hold their lead in the SEC East, but had to take on Arkansas first. Let's see how the Gamecocks did against the Hogs. As the Gamecocks traveled to Fayetteville, Arkansas, it was South Carolina's Connor Shaw versus Arkansas's Tyler Wilson. Arkansas gets on the board early with a Zach Hawker 44-yard field goal, putting the Razorbacks up three to nothing. But the Gamecocks would respond as Connor Shaw pitches it and fakes out our cameraman to Brandon Wilds, who goes in from four yards, giving the Gamecocks a 7-3 lead early in the first quarter. But not to be outdone, Dennis Johnson takes the kickoff back 98 yards. Watch this kid run. This kid has some speed. He only he, he gets through the defense one level of coverage and he is gone. This kid, I don't know why there's not more buzz. This kid is good. The next time Arkansas would get the ball, Tyler Wilson would roll out looking for somebody to pass to and throws it to somebody, but it's Devin Taylor who takes it back 48 yards for the pick six, the second pick six of his career, putting the Gamecocks up 14 to 10. But on the next drive, Tyler Wilson first play goes yard. 68 yards to Jarius Wright, who gets past the defense into the end zone, 17 to 14, Arkansas. And on the next Arkansas possession, Wilson again hooks up with Wright, for, this time for 16 yards. Razorbacks 24, Gamecocks 14. And that would be the score at halftime and early in the third quarter, Connor Shaw goes in from nine yards out, pushes through the defense, getting the Gamecocks back within three, 24 to 21. But Zach Hawker would make another field goal, this one from 21 yards, adding three points to Arkansas, 27-21. And here, Brandon Wilds fumbles the ball. Arkansas gets it back and Zach Hawker would hit another field goal, this one from 25 yards, 30 to 21 Razorbacks. But the Gamecocks during the first drive of the fourth quarter would drive all the way down to the one and Connor Shaw punches it through, getting South Carolina within two, Arkansas 30, South Carolina 28. But as they did all night, the Razorbacks would respond as Ronnie Wingo Jr. goes in for the score from four yards out putting the Razorbacks up 37-28. And here, Connor Shaw is gonna get pummeled by Jake Bouquet. He fumbles the ball, it's recovered by DeQuinta Jones at the South Carolina one. And from there, Broderick Green will punch it in. Razorbacks end up winning 44-28. Hunter Banks, Capital City Sports. After the disappointing loss to the Razorbacks, most fans are complaining about the offense. Let's send it to Justin and Hunter in the boardroom to get their take on it. Welcome to the boardroom. I'm Justin Stevens, along beside me, Hunter Banks, Hunter, how you doing today, man? Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. The Gamecock football team, though, struggled in Arkansas, <laughs> 14 hours away. They traveled all the way there, and they didn't seem to show up. Hunter, what was the one main causes for that? Uh, one of the main causes was Connor Shell. He only had 128 yards passing for a Steve Spurrier 
quarterback, that's not good. He rolls out of the pocket every time he gets the ball. I do not understand why he does that. I understand you have pressure, but sometimes you just need to step up in the pocket, not always roll out, because Connor Shaw has proven he's not a good outside of the pocket passer. He cannot throw on the run. And Connor Shaw, I mean, he's a good runner, but he's no Tim Tebow or no Mike Vick. I'm, Granted, he led the team in rushing yards at only 59, which is another bad thing. That should never happen. I just don't understand what Connor Shaw's problem is. His first game against Kentucky, he was great. Yeah, yeah and the, like you said, in the Kentucky game, it seemed like Connor Shaw you know, was able to pass the ball, found Alshon two times for a touchdown, and now they're calling plays, you know, quarterback draw or read options for Connor Shaw. Elaborate on that. I've got a new game plan for Coach Spur. Now, I want you to listen closely, Steve. It's called the Get Alshon the Frickin' Ball Game Plan. I do not understand why you don't try to get this guy the ball more. He is tall. He can run. He can catch. He can jump. He's everything you want in a wide receiver. If he's lazy, uh, that's your job to fix that. The guy is unbelievable. He had a great, great year last year, excuse me, but we're not getting in the ball. We try a couple times, but we're not trying as much as we should. Throwing in the ball maybe five times is not going to get him back in a groove. You have to get a, a receiver back in the groove. I, you just got to get Alsh on the ball. You got to get back to the fun and gun system that Steve Spurrier used to run at Florida. Yeah, it seems like one of the things that will help Alshon out is if other receivers get open. Yes. You know, a. Sanders did really good at the beginning of the season. We have Barnes, we have Ellington, we have Nick Jones who has stepped up lately, but it seems like we're just not getting him the ball. And another receiver you didn't mention is Demir Bird. The kid is fast. I cannot even tell you how fast this kid is, but I don't even know if I've seen him catch a pass. Maybe one or two, but they're mostly running him on reverses. So when he goes on the field, defensives know, defensive, excuse me, defenses know that he's not going to catch the ball, that it's going to be a reverse. And, you know, players like Jason Barnes, Rory Anderson, they need to step up and they need to get about two receptions a game. Justice Cunningham has been doing a great job up the middle for these seven-yard gains. Justice Cunningham, you're fine. Don't worry. Bruce Ellington, he needs to get the ball a little bit more. You can also add the get Bruce Ellington the freaking ball game plan, Steve. Um, you, you have to spread it out so Alshon can get the ball because if you don't spread it out, they're always going to focus on Alshon which is not going to let him get the ball because he'll be double teamed every time. Yeah. All in all, that offense is struggling right there, right now. There's no doubt about it. And it's rough. It's rough. Yeah, and that does it for the offense portion of the boardroom. We'll be back in a bit to break down the defense. Coming up after the break, the guys in the boardroom break down the defense, and the men's soccer team competes for the Conference USA Championship. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. After a stellar start to the season, the Gamecock defense finally broke down. To see what Arkansas did to exploit the Gamecocks, let's send it to the guys in the boardroom. Welcome back in the boardroom. Now the defense struggled a bit against that Arkansas Razorback offense. They put up 44 points and a total of 435 yards, and most of those yards came in the passing game. You know, our secondary is not the best in the nation. Our defense, our defense is good, but this was finally the game that exposed our weaknesses, which has me worried for other games. They will now know to pass the ball because our secondary is not that good. You look at Stephon Gilmore, he led the team in tackles against Arkansas. That's never good for a cornerback. You want your cornerbacks to not have any tackles. That means their receivers are not getting the ball. Stephon Gilmore, personally, he's one of the most overrated players. CeCe Whitlock, I mean, he's, he's pretty good, but could have used some work. And the rest of the secondary, they just need to step it up a little bit. It seems like 
once that secondary starts to get a little bit more momentum, yeah. injuries start to plague them. Oh, yeah. And now they're back to square one for that yep. defense. What unit is healthy, though, right now, the linebackers aren't healthy, secondary isn't healthy. That defensive, defensive line, line is healthy right now. Yes. And they're the, right now, they're the only – you know, good part of this defense. Yeah, and that's rough because you don't want your defensive line to have to carry your defense. But, I mean, when you've got guys like Melvin Ingram, Devin Taylor, and Jadevian Clowney, and you can't forget Travion Robertson, but when you've got those guys on your defensive line, you're going to have a great defensive line. Devin Taylor, it was great to see him get an interception return for a touchdown. Maybe that will change the momentum of the season. That's exactly what happened last year against Tennessee. He had that great interception return for a touchdown, pick six. Beautiful. This one, even more so. You know, Melvin Ingram, he had a lot of Heisman talk, which that'll never happen, but he was that good early on in the season. But that has died down because he has not performed at that level. Yeah. Same with Jadavion Clowney, the number one recruit in the nation. I mean, the kid should be performing a little bit better than he is right now. Maybe I'm the only one who thinks that, but I'm pretty sure most people expect these two guys to step it up a little bit. Thanks. Because I mean, this is the way South Carolina fans are. When you give them something great, they expect even more. So, kind of have to step it up, guys. One person that cannot slack off when he comes back off injury is Antonio Allen. Oh, yeah. He's been carrying this defense through this latter part of the season, and having him back will be a big key because Demario Jeffrey really struggled against Arkansas. I mean, Demario Jeffrey, you can't really blame it on him. He was thrust into a position he was not expecting to have to play. And he didn't perform as bad as many people have said. The guy straight up told everybody that he played horrible. But Demario, like, if you're watching, dude, you didn't play that bad. You didn't play great. But that's to be expected when you're, it's your first start of the season. So Demario, I wouldn't really worry about him too much. But Antonio Allen, I mean, what can you say about the guy? He's a great player. He's a great leader. He's led the team all year. Him and Melvin Ingram started out stellar at the beginning of the season. They were kind of the unofficial leaders of the defense. Melvin Ingram has kind of slowed down a little bit on his performance. So Antonio Allen has had to step up. Now he's the sole leader. But he's hurt now. Hopefully he'll be back for Florida. He's expected to be back. If he will be back, Gamecocks will have no problem beating the Gators. If he is not back, I'm afraid that John Brantley might finally have a good game. And unfortunately, it would be against the Gamecocks. Yeah, we definitely need Antonio Allen back yes. for that Gamecock defense against the Gators. And we'll be back to break down the Florida game after the break. The men's soccer team had a chance to clinch Conference USA Championship Friday as they hosted Kentucky. Let's see how they did. On Friday, November 4th, the Gamecocks played host to the Kentucky Wildcats for the outright for the Conference USA Championship. And Alex Long making a pretty neat save there to save his team from Kentucky scoring a goal, which he has been doing all night. Bradley Balladay is setting up for the corner kick, one of 19 corner kicks Carolina has been doing all night. But unfortunately, Kentucky's goalkeeper has been saving that all night. At the 22nd minute, Kentucky scored a goal by C.J. Tapper with the assist by Ryan Costein. And already Kentucky is up one mil at the graveyard. Still in the first half, Carolina trying to recover from that first goal, and Alex Long making another save there, trying to bounce off on that last goal. On to the second half, the action is moving pretty quickly as Mike Mangotic scores a goal for Carolina with the assist from goalkeeper Alex Long, which evened the score. Kentucky won, Carolina won. Continuing in the second half, a serious moment here as Danny Cates goes down. He got hit in the face hard by a soccer ball. But well, luckily enough, he comes back and fights like a warrior he is. The Gamecocks are threatening the score here in the second half as Mike Mangata gets it passed over the goalkeeper. But unfortunately, it goes out and Carolina will have to settle for a goal kick. Kentucky threatening the score and Tyler Riggs will put it in for Kentucky. Now it's Kentucky 2-1. to one. The Gamecocks are now threatening the score and looks like they will have that opportunity with a penalty kick coming up. Stephen Morrissey will take the kick for the Gamecocks but Jack Van Arsdale will add another save to us. In the 83rd minute, the Gamecocks look to score, and they do, thanks to Mike Mangata, his second goal of the night with the assist from Danny Cates, which evens it up two goals apiece. Nothing much going on in overtime, just the Gamecocks playing some magnificent defense, and they were able to hang on at two points apiece. Carolina is now 9-6-2, and they will face either Marshall or SMU on Friday. This is Ross Anzopoulos, Capital City Sports. Coming up after the break. 
Justin and Hunter break down next week's game against Florida, and the Lady Gamecock basketball team opens their season hosting Limestone. Stay with us. Welcome back. In order to keep any hope alive of returning to the SEC Championship, the Gamecocks have to beat Florida this weekend. To learn more about the Gators and to see what the Gamecocks have to do to win, let's send it to Justin and Hunter in the boardroom. Steve Spurrier's alma mater and homecoming. And Hunter, we lost homecoming last year. Yeah. How do you think it's going to go this year? Uh, it's going to be about the same. Let me tell you a little something about homecoming last year. We lost to Arkansas. Who did we lose to last week? Arkansas. You know why we lost? A little thing I like to call the Zeta curse. Who brings a hog and puts it on Green Street for people to feed the week you're playing the Razorbacks? A Razorback is a hog. I do not understand this logic. I, it, it's beyond me. Yeah, let's hope they don't bring an alligator. If an alligator shows up, I'm going to have a serious problem. Yeah, put an alligator in the Yeah, let's, put, the a, let's put an alligator back there. <laughs> that, that would be fun. <laughs> yeah, and the offense, what is the offense going to have to do to, you know, take apart that Florida defense? Offense is just going to have to do what they used to do. I mean, you can't just hand the ball off to Brandon Wilds. He proved that with the fumble he had last week. He's not a Marcus Lattimore. He's good, but he's not a Marcus Lattimore. You've got to get Alshon the ball more often. I know we've already talked about that, but I cannot tell you how important that is. And you've got to get Connor Shaw to play the way Connor Shaw can. Stay in the pocket and pass the ball. Don't roll out. He cannot pass when he rolls out. One of the most important things the game is going to have to do is slow down that Florida offense. Mm. Demps and Rainey. Demps took a kick return back earlier this season. From end zone to end zone, 11 seconds flat. That speed is ridiculous. Yeah, oh, it's nothing. I get it in nine seconds. <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe a little bit more, but I mean, the Gamecocks, they just got to stick on these guys. I mean, please don't put Stephon Gilmore out there because he won't be able to stick on anybody. But you put DJ Swearinger, if he's healthy out there, I think he can handle it. Antonio Allen can certainly handle it. Rodney Polk, who had a good game against Arkansas, he can handle these guys. It's not, I'm not really that concerned about it. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about John Brantley finally having a good game. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm afraid he's going to have a good game. Pick our defensive secondary apart. And I really think that he will. I think he'll have his first you know, really good game of the year. I think the Gators will win. Yeah, let's hope Charlie Weiss doesn't have all those plays up in his, in his you know, book of tricks that he you has. You would think Charlie Weiss would have a little sympathy for his alma mater. Yeah. I mean, the guy got his NBA here. I mean, come on, Charlie. Like, cut us some slack. Like you said, Gamecocks lost last year in homecoming. How do you think the score is going to be in this one? I don't think it'll be as bad as it was last year. I, that's a good question, man. I'm probably going to have to go. It's going to be about, let's go 35-30. I think that'll be about right. 35-30 Florida? 35-30, no, Arkansas. Yes, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go uh, maybe a little bit under on the scoring-wise. I don't think that Gamecock offense is back the way it was. But I'm going to well, say... Well, you have to think. Florida defense isn't as good as it used to be. No, but they do have a good defensive coordinator. Oh, their head coach, Miss M Mitch Muschamp. Really Will good. Muschamp. Yeah, really good head coach, defensive coordinator at Texas. Uh, so, we'll he's see. A good, he's a defensive coordinator. I wouldn't exactly call him a good head coach. I mean, look at Florida. They're not doing too good. <laughs> But anyway, yeah. that does it for the boardroom. We'll be back next week to break down the Florida game and preview the Citadel game. After a short run to the second round of the NIT last year, the Lady Gamecock basketball team is looking for more. 
Let's see how they open their season against Limestone. Friday night, the women's basketball team took the floor against the Limestone Saints at the Colonial Life Arena. The Gamecocks came on strong on both sides of the ball, shooting up to an offensive lead early in the first period and showing good defensive skills here when Lakeisha Sutton steals the ball from Morgan Brown and drives it all the way down to the hoop for two points. The Gamecocks pulled away from the Saints by as much as 14 points. Ashley Brunner is seen here scoring another two points for Carolina. It wasn't long before the Saints began to answer back with beautiful three-point shots like this one seen here by Maria Young. The Carolina defense gave up eight total three-pointers to the Limestone Saints, something Coach Don Staley said would need to be worked on in the future. Four Carolina Gamecocks went into double digits Friday night against the Saints, including Markeisha Grant, who shot six for six. 16 total points, four of those shots being three-pointers. Speaking of threes, here's Maria Young for the Saints, racking up another one. Limestone trailed the Gamecocks 26-47 at the half. The Saints' Tia Williams, seen here, scored 13 points against Carolina and led her team with six rebounds. Both teams went back and forth, the Gamecocks keeping a steady lead after the half. Lakeisha Sutton scores again with this aggressive offensive drive, leaving Limestone's Morgan Brown on the floorboards. The final score, Carolina 84, Limestone 53. The Lady Gamecocks' regular season kicks off November 11th at Illinois. Jenny Eiler, Capital City Sports. Coming up after the break, Swimming and Diving hosts nationally ranked Tennessee. Stay with us. The swim and dive team lost its big rival when Clemson shut down its program last year, but they still have traditional SEC opponents like Tennessee. To see how the team did against number 13 ranked Vols, let's send it to Pat Clooney. Swimming and diving took on Tennessee at the Blatt PE Center on Friday. Several Gamecocks had great days in the pool and on the boards. In women's diving, senior Courtney Frasucci took first place in both the 3 meter and 1 meter springboard competitions with scores of 360.08 and 296.63. On the men's boards, junior Rylan Ridenor was victorious in the 3 meter competition with a score of 396.82. In the pool, USC dominated the distance events. Junior Lindsay Olson got the win in women's 500 freestyle, swimming a time of just over 5 minutes and 5 seconds. On the men's side, sophomore Gerard Rodriguez took first in the 500 with a time of 4 minutes 36 seconds, while junior Brooks Ross finished second in the 1,000 meter race. Gerard Rodriguez was also a winner in the 200 freestyle. Junior Andrew Seiler provided a highlight in the Gamecock sprint events with a win in the 50 freestyle, as well as a second place finish in the 100 free. Breaststroke was another highlight for South Carolina, with sophomore Amanda Rutgers winning the 200 breaststroke for the women and junior Bobby Cave taking the same event for the men. Senior, senior Isaac Vidio captured the 100 fly for the Gamecocks as well. Both teams also took first in the 400 IM. Sophomore Matt Nevada for the men and sophomore Rachel Schaefer for the women. However, these wins were not enough to take down the Vols as Tennessee edged out the Gamecocks in just a few too many races. Tennessee would take both sides of the competition in this one, defeating the men by a score of 167 to 132 and the women by a score of 174 to 124. From the Black PE Center, I'm Pat Cloney, Capital City Sports. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Capital City Sports. If you missed any of our episodes, you can find us online by searching sgtv.sc.edu. Find us on Facebook at Capital City Sports or follow us on Twitter at CCS Staff. Make sure you tune in next week for our next episode. For everyone here at Capital City Sports, I'm Emily McDonald. Have a great week.